Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox Podcast. Today, we've got our top five last-minute exam tips for you. Your Law School Toolbox hosts are Allison Monahan, that's me, and Lee Burgess. We're here to demystify the law school and early legal career experience so that you'll be the best law student and lawyer you can be. Together with the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website, Career Dicta. I also run the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review or rating on your favorite listening app. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always reach us via the contact form on lawschooltoolbox.com, and we would love to hear from you. With that, let's get started. Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox podcast. Today, we've got our top five last minute exam tips for you. But before we dive in, we have to take a moment to celebrate because a it's while a back, a while back, I mean, it's got to be way over this number now, but we hit our millionth download, which is pretty crazy, which happened overnight. It was kind of a crazy moment. We got up in the morning. We were going to try and catch it. We had people <laughs> in different time zones and we missed it, we missed but, it. Yeah. but a million downloads. So thanks That's for insane. listening. That's yeah. pretty cool. Thank you, everyone. I, I know. I don't know whom our million down those was, but we really appreciate it. It was kind of an exciting milestone. It made me feel very legitimate. I know. I was like, who would have thought? That's a lot of man hours. But back in the day, I did not think we would have a million downloads. No, that's pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah. So thank so, you for listening. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, now let's get into our top five last minute exam tips. So this shouldn't be a shock if you've listened to some of those other podcast episodes we've done, but you got to practice, guys. You got to practice, practice, practice. So if you have to go back to studying and you don't have time to listen to the rest of this episode, at least listen to this part where we tell you to practice. Don't show up to the exam doing any part of it for the first time. Yeah, and this could apply to multiple choice questions, Mm -hmm. essay questions, short answer questions, whatever type of questions you're going to have. The only exception is a take home. You can't really replicate (laughs) that, but you can still do the essays. That's true, but oftentimes even take homes, they'll give you kind of a past exam to at least like see what you're going to expect. Yeah. And I think that is so key. You know, you want to know what to expect. You want to practice doing this. Like earlier today, we recorded a podcast about the bar exam and how it's so important to write out those answers because it's a different process, you know, writing an answer, particularly under time conditions versus just kind of thinking about the answer or identifying some issues. You know, those are important steps, but that's not the same thing as actually committing to paper in a logical and coherent way what you're talking about. Yep. And I think what we hear over and over and over again when students call us for advice is um, all the reasons why they don't have to practice or they aren't ready to practice or why they they shouldn't be practiced or they can't practice. So um, our top, you know, reasons that we hear are, I don't have my outlines done. I don't have enough practice materials. I don't know the law yet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's kind of the point of practicing (laughs) is that it actually forces you to understand what it is that you don't know and in what areas you are woefully unprepared. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that you know, we see the longer we do this is really about active learning and engaging in the material. And oftentimes, I think what happens when you haven't don't have the outlines, or you don't have the practice materials, or you don't haven't studied, quote unquote, studied the law, which can mean so many different things to different people. It's like, what you really need to be doing is struggling with the material and applying law to facts, because that's what's on your exam. And that is active learning. And that is actually going to make this stuff stick in your brain just reading an outline, even typing from your, my favorite, like, oh, I'm just making this outline from my notes. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm using fonts and colors and it's 27 to 50 pages long. That is not adhering anything to your memory. No, no. And that actually gets into number two, which is you really have to put this material together for yourself Mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Um, And that might which this makes people uncomfortable, it no. might mean less attention paid to class no, and sorry, more, att- yeah, more attention paid to studying. We're not saying you should stop going to class. Mm-mm. We're not even saying you should stop doing the reading for class. What we're saying is that cannot continue to be your primary focus at this point in the semester, or you're probably going to fail your exams or at least do fairly poorly on them. Yep. You've got to start seeing the end game here. And if you, again, don't know what the end game looks like, you need to talk to your professors, you need to get passed out, you need to get past exams, you need to understand what the end game is, because it's time to start preparing for the end game. Right. And I think a lot of people, I mean, I remember my first semester, I definitely hadn't even looked at 
a sample exam until fairly late in the semester. Oh, yeah. I just thought, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to class. Like, I'm doing okay. If I get cold called, I'm keeping up with the reading. I'm cool. Yeah. You know, and then you look at this exam and you think, wow, huh. Not cool. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I really know how to approach <laughs> this, particularly, you know, in certain classes where the professors were very big picture and they were mm-hmm. talking about policy and, you know, my Civ Pro professor kind of said on day one, like, ah, the rules, I don't find them so interesting. You should read those on your own. There are other things we're going to talk about. And then you get, you know, you look at a sample answer or a sample exam from that class. And it's like, you know, so-and-so is like a person who is crossing state lines and has a car accident. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait, this is like something <laughs> out of like, you know, Torch 101 mm-hmm. supplement. Like this isn't, or, or Civ Pro, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that was, they were all, they were crossing state lines. Yeah, they were crossing state yeah. lines. But, you know, it was all sort of the same. You know, the, a lot of these schools, your professor is very theoretical and they're you know, very interested in their policy discussions. But then their exams are very straightforward kind of fact patterns. And <laughs> if mm-hmm. you're not expecting that, And what you've been doing hasn't really prepared you for that. That can be, you know, a little disconcerting. Yeah. And really understanding these legal concepts is how they relate to the real world. You know, it's like just knowing the rules for like dragging a defendant back into a jurisdiction in civil procedure is different than understanding like why we do that. Like, like, what's the policy behind that? Right, I mean, like, you know, we'd spend so much, I mean, I don't even think I understood until I kind of sat down and put this stuff together that, like, there actually were just, like, certain things you had to comply with in order to, like, have jurisdiction over someone, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a constitutional requirement, and, right. like, you have to, you know, check this box, and you have to check this other box, and those boxes were not apparent to me when we were just, like, discussing this in class. Right, and, you know, let's take another example that most 1Ls have studied, which is torts, you know, you're doing negligence and you've got, you know, the basic structure for negligence of duty, breach, causation, damages, and under duty, you've got the standard of care. And then you've got like all these alternative standard of care. So right? it's like standard of care for minors, standard of care for a bar owner, standard of care for a medical doctor, sta- you know, and yeah, you can just memorize them. But what you really need to understand is like, why? Yeah, why? You know? Why does a bar owner have maybe a different standard of care than a good Samaritan? Or, or like, you know, with the landlord, you know, the landowner stuff, like, why do we have these different levels of liability for mm-hmm. different types of, you know, different types of trespassers for a landowner, you know, that kind of thing? Right. Maybe you have a higher duty to somebody that you've invited onto your property or to somebody you don't even know who's there who's trespassing, you know, maybe that makes sense. Um, but, you know, you kind of need to think about all this stuff, not just be like, oh, there are like X number of duties, then here's what they are. Nobody's going to ask you to list them out. They're going to ask you to use them. Right. And so the method of getting comfortable with this material is that you probably want to find some commercial supplements to help with the big picture if you don't have the big picture yet. And that's going to help you kind of fill in some of the details. Some of our favorites, examples and explanations are always really good. Some people like more outline-based supplements. Maybe your professor has some preferred supplements. You can go to your academic support office and see what they recommend for different professors. But you probably are going to need some sort of a supplement to help you out. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, if you do have the examples and explanations, like you might also need this commercial outline because those are different things. You know, so you kind of got to think like, what are my what are my problem areas mm-hmm. right now? If you're just like, I have no idea how the pieces of like Civ Pro fit together and I right. can't do anything. Then you probably want to go to your examples and explanations, which is a Glannon one, and it's really good. The Civ Pro and the Torts both are very good, you know, and that's going to walk you through like using these rules and understanding them. And then you still have to kind of make sense of it in a way that you can use on an exam. So that's where I would go to like a commercial outline and be like, okay, here's my like big picture structure. Mm -hmm. So just think about, you know, what do I need here? Like where, like we're going to talk about this later, but kind of where am I in this process and what do I need to find to help me with it in the limited time that I have available? Yep. And then once you are kind of in this material, then it's on you to use whatever techniques to organize the material and make it your own that you want. So some people work really well with linear outlines. Some people work really well with flowcharts. Some people work well with flashcards, but I would... It's argue be very careful <laughs> very careful with flashcards um some people are auditory learners we have had students who memorize themselves reading the outline and then i'm sorry not memorize that they record, record. themselves li- um reading an outline and they listen to it in the car or on their commute to school and that's one way that they learn or they lecture to their stuffed animals or their dog i mean you can get creative here but it's got to mean something to you well and i think too again like it's 
you got to think about where you are in the process. So are you trying to memorize, like literally memorize the material? Then, okay, some flashcards, maybe not the worst idea. Right. But you can't jump to that step until you understand it. And so some yeah. like flashcards are typically not going to help you understand the material. They might help you memorize it. Something like a flow chart or a linear outline or like diagramming, you know, those are the things that are going to let you understand that material. But then maybe you don't memorize the flow chart, you know? Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, so you're going to have to decide where this time comes from. So this is the time where the deep work, those, like in your study schedule, you need to start really carving out time where you're doing the studying. Routinely. Routinely. Not, <laughs> Not like, like once an hour a week. day. Right? <laughs> you know? or, like, or like an hour a week. Or an hour a week. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to have some like solid chunks where you're doing this sort of studying. And so you're going to have to really look at your time and see if it's time to step back from, you know, doing some you know, extra work to prepare for class, or maybe you're doing the reading, but you're not also reading the supplements or whatever you need to do. One of the things I do want to plug, though, is oftentimes professors test on some of the stuff that was covered at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's why they're covering it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I think in torts, this often happens that the last thing they teach is products liability. And that's so disproportionately likely to show up. And it's so disproportionately likely to show up. And it's hard. Actually, yeah, products is pretty complicated it's stuff. It's like the, what, probably the most complicated yeah. topic. It's generally crammed into the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Frequently shows up. People aren't paying attention in class. They're not really focused. Yeah. So you have to be careful on that. Yeah. Or uh, the worst is like if a class has been canceled and they do a makeup session oh, yeah. and you decide not to go to it. Do not do that. Yeah. That will, yeah. If they're bothering to hold a makeup <laughs> session, that is really likely to stuff yeah. that's like likely to show up. The other time that this comes up is in constitutional law. Oftentimes the fourth I'm sorry, the first amendment is often the last thing that they teach. Mm. And the First Amendment, also super murky, not particularly easy or linear. Super fun to test. Super fun to test because you can write really creative fact patterns. Yep. And people mess up the law all the time. Yeah, so you've got to curve somehow. So focusing, you know, if you're a professor and you're thinking, how am I going to curve this exam? Like, oh, I'm going to do the more complicated information that we cover in a rush at the very end. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So, so you, you definitely want to go to class. You want to be prepared. But, you know, maybe you're not spending extra time briefing at this point in mm-hmm. the semester. You know, you should already be able to read a case, hopefully, at this point, have some factual recall. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think professors get that, like, people may be a little less prepared for the cold calls the last like, week or so. Yeah. We also have a great podcast called Avoiding Exam Disasters that we'll link to in the show notes. Yeah. So this is if you're really flailing. Yeah. If you're really like. <laughs> if you're things, like, I haven't done anything. And like, it's time to triage. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'll that'll Stop the bleeding. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. The next thing um, you want to think about is just get it, whatever help you need. It's yeah. This, time this to is definitely help. Yeah. This is a time to call in the troops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you already mentioned like makeup classes, but also if your professor is going to take time to like hold a review session, you should go. You should go and you should take notes um, and you should pay attention carefully to, you know, if they let people ask questions and certain questions they don't seem particularly interested in and then other questions they do seem Mm -hmm. very interested in, you know. Sometimes people really telegraph unintentionally or intentionally like what they're kind of thinking about maybe putting on the exam. And sometimes they're writing it around the time of these, you know, these like review sessions. Right. They haven't necessarily finished it that far in advance. I I had a professor who I was her TA um, as well. She's actually the new dean of my law school, but she used to write her fact patterns. She was really into celebrity news, but she also used to write it just about stuff that happened in her life. So I remember one of my contracts, I had her for two semesters in contracts and one of them, she was moving. And so her whole fact pattern was this crazy scenario all about moving. It was really funny. That is funny. Yeah, so find out what's going on in your professor's life. What they like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You never know. Um, but yeah, but, you know, that review session, A, I mean, you can hopefully get some of your questions answered. Um, you can also go to office hours, although these tend to be a little bit jammed up this time of year. But again, like, you know, use that 10 minutes that you get to good effect. Don't just go in and be kind of like, hey, what's up? Be like, I was working on this practice problem, and I don't understand this part mm-hmm. of it. Could you help me walk through it? <laughs> exactly. Um, you also want to utilize classmates in a smart way. So if you don't have a study group initially, I think you can still get you get together with some friends and be thoughtful. You guys can compare outlines or attack plans. 
You can do give feedback to each other on practice exams, although remember that you're just another law student giving feedback right. to another law student. <laughs> Better than nothing. Better than nothing. Um, but I think it can be helpful to work together to a point as long as the work that you're doing is actually moving you forward. Right. And I think if you do have a study group, you know, this is when they tend to go a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to spend 14 hours a day, like crammed together in this room in the library. But you have to make sure you're using that time effectively. And you have to make sure that you and everybody else is actually practicing on your own. Because unfortunately, there's not like a group test. (laughs) Usually, I mean, it would have been so cool. Yeah, I mean, very occasionally, some kooky professor will do something like that. But typically speaking, you're going to be on your own. And I think there can be a false sense of security in a study group if you, you know, read and brainstorm an answer and you all think, like, oh, yeah, that was great. But each one of you is only going to get 40 percent of that answer. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, you've got to make sure that you are doing, again, like your personal work and making sure you're prepared. Yeah. Um, But, you know, if you don't have a study group, then you can just ask a couple of people, maybe different people in each class, like, hey, do you want to like work on this practice problem together? Like, let's do it. And then we can compare our notes. Stuff like that can actually be very effective. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes people are like, this is a great time for me to go like knock on the door of academic support, but it it may not be a good time to (laughs) knock. You can try, (laughs) but, you know, good good luck because, you know, there are a lot of people in there who may have been going to academic support throughout the entire semester. So I think this is a time where if you're really struggling and you need some extra resources, this is can be where hiring a tutor Um, which is like what our team does, can be very effective because we can jump in in those final days and help you triage your workload and explain concepts that you're still struggling with, give you- Force you to practice. Force you to practice, (laughs) give you feedback on that practice and help clean up your writing. So hopefully you're a bit better prepared for exams. So a lot of, you know, I think sometimes people get really overwhelmed by those final weeks of the semester and think that a lot of work can't actually get done. But I mean, like even a week is a really long time in exam time. Yeah, I mean, I remember my second semester as a 1L, like I was in pretty bad shape, like going a few weeks into, you know, maybe like say two to three weeks out from exams. I had had kind of a disastrous semester. You know, I'd been clinically depressed at the beginning of it. I Mm -hmm. hadn't really been going to class. Like, you know, I kind of turned it around, like started dragging myself out of bed (laughs) and going to class. But like, it was not a great scenario. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I did at some point sit down a few weeks from exams and go, okay, how am I going to start to salvage this? Like, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I employed my circles method, which I'm a big fan of. We can link to that blog post. And really, I mean, I remember being in the library like 12 to 14 hours a day for like two weeks straight and just day after day, like triaging classes. Mm -hmm. And like, it wasn't my best semester ever, but it also wasn't a disaster, you know? And so you kind of have that moment of like, okay, I've got a few weeks left. This is not going well. Do I just kind of throw my hands up and say, whoopsie? Right. Or do you really try to focus and like do what you can, understanding it might not be like your absolute best work? I mean, that's a totally personal choice. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of stuff can happen in those last few weeks if you're thoughtful about it. But you don't want to throw up your hands. You want to make a plan and stick to it. Yeah. I mean, I remember once I've been tutored someone and taught them literally all of Civ Pro in like two days, mm-hmm. which I would not normally do, but she was nice and you know, there were extenuating circumstances. <laughs> and I was like, well, I was a Civ Pro TA, so I really can actually do this. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, like she actually did pretty well on the exam. Yeah. So that was two days of extra work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all right. I think, you know, let's tie this back into our number four, which is you really got to get a realistic understanding of where you're at at this point and mm-hmm. not be delusional or assume it's just all going to work out because you're a smart person, which I think sometimes people at least subconsciously think like I've, you know, I procrastinated through my undergrad. I managed to pull it out at the last minute. I'm a smart person. I've done this before. Like I'll do it before, but law school is not really quite like that. No. I mean, you, everyone in the room is pretty smart. Yeah. Um, which some is part of, of the been, problem. Some of them have been working. Right. Some <laughs> of them have been studying and working all semester. Um, and you know, you've got to put in the heavy lifting. So you can be smart about how you're going to use the finite amount of time you have left, but you should be using it at studying those professor's old exams, taking them, getting other practice exams if that professor isn't providing them. Like you need to understand what the end game is and prepare for that end game. Yeah, exactly. Like you can almost deconstruct certain exams. Like, okay, if I've seen five exams from a certain professor, which frankly, I mean, a lot of them have way more exams than that on file if they've Mm -hmm. been teaching for a while. You can kind of start to see like, okay, they tend to give three questions. One of them is more policy focused. One of them is this. One of them is that. They typically address these type of questions. You know, they're not, I mean, you can't recreate the wheel. 
Right. You know, if you're if you're giving like a civ pro exam, you're probably going to talk about jurisdiction. If you're giving a torts exam, right. it's probably going to cover negligence. You mm-hmm. know. <laughs> I mean, I remember one semester of civ pro, it was like every exam every single year was about class actions because that was mm-hmm. like a chunk of the class. Yeah. Like you couldn't like not test on class actions. Right. So, you know, study that. Yeah, like, I, mean, I, mean, I just think, you know, yeah. you, can, you can actually, like, kind of deconstruct patterns on a lot of these. And mm-hmm. obviously, they could do something totally kooky, but most people aren't that creative. You know, they're probably going to keep to this trend that they've done before. And they're going to get the curve either way. I mean, I think that sometimes people forget that professors don't want to grade super wacky exams because the answers all gonna be are bad. Mess. They're, they're all going to be terrible. Yeah, and they don't want to try and curve that. That is uh, yeah, misery. Like, how do you yeah, how do you give like this person an A because they did slightly better on your terrible <laughs> exam, yeah. you know? Like they want to have something where it's like some of the people are going to go in and knock this one out of the park. Other people are going to kind of muddle through and be in the middle. And then a few people are going to be like a total disaster. Right. And there's your curve. Yeah, exactly. Done. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can see a lot. So, you know, I think if you are not quite sure where you're at, you really have to get real about this. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, like, go listen to our the podcast on exam disasters if you're like, I'm kind of a disaster because there are things you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of our tutors... I think she's really like the triage master. Mm. Like, I feel like it's like every year you're like, I know who to send you to. Yeah. Oh, you're a mess. Oh, you're a mess. But she can, <laughs> fi- like, she can fix that. Like, you she got can four clean, days. You All got right. four days. Like, we got somebody <laughs> who can clean up your mess in four days. Like, I mean, you know, it's not as good as working through the whole semester, but I think with some perspective, you can. You know, you can fix things, but you have to be willing. And particularly if you have open book exams. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was what saved me my second semester. Yeah. Is I had all open book exams. You know, if you go into an open book exam with a solid attack plan, like some resources if you need to look stuff up, um, and then, you know, you carefully read the question, you really think about it, you go through all the processes, you know, you can actually do respectably well. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to our last tip, which is know the law in detail and precisely and not in broad strokes. So here comes every, I've sold this question, on, or I've told this story on other podcasts, but it's my favorite holiday story, yeah. which is Lee's trip home for Thanksgiving when I was a 1L, sitting at my mom's kitchen, mom and dad's kitchen table. And my mom came over and was like, what are you studying? And I was like, my torts exam is my first exam. And she was like, why didn't you tell me the rule for X, Y, Z? And I start like kind of pontificating about like the broad strokes of a rule. And then she got very serious and was like, that's not how you do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> lucky Lee. Lucky she had me. A mother. <laughs> I did. Who was like, let me tell you what needs to be done. You have to be able to spout out this rule like with the exact language, you know, in this way. And I just kind of had this aha moment um, where I was like, oh. You're like, oh, that's oh. not how I've been and studying. To be honest, it's already like, mid no, late November, right? And I had not done <laughs> practice exams at that point. I had just been like outlining and doing everything that they told me I was supposed to be doing at school. I had not been applying that law to the facts and seeing if I could execute the question. So then I had some triaging to do. Yeah, I feel like everyone does, mm-hmm. you know, in their last in their first semester, particularly. Yeah. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Like you haven't done this before. There's no reason that you would necessarily understand that. Yeah. But that's why I think if nothing else, you know, take a practice exam today. Mm -hmm. Go get one, read it, take it. If you are completely flailing on it, then there's work to be done. Yeah. All right. Any bonus tips? uh, Yeah. One more thing on the law and detail thing. Um, That applies to open book and closed book exams. True. You know, so if it's a closed book exam, you're gonna have to memorize it. But sometimes I think with open book exams, people have this idea that like, oh, I, you know, I have this hundred page outline, I'll bring in all my textbooks, I'll just put an index and look stuff (laughs) up. And it's like, you don't have time to be looking Mm -hmm. up like the structure of the law. Yeah. Like you need to, again, kind of be able to spit this out of your brain and you can whatever you can reference something if you need to. But ideally, Mm -hmm. I mean, you need like the basic law pretty much in your head because otherwise you're not gonna be able to identify issues. Right. So I think open book exams can provide this false sense of security of like, eh, yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, have a pretty good idea of the basic understanding. I can talk about policy. Mm-hmm. And then if I have to, you know, talk about intentional torts, um, I'll just look up like the rules on assault and battery. So you don't have time for that. Right. Absolutely not. So anyway, yeah, under our bonus materials, I think, you know, for me, the kind of bonus overarching thing here is you've got to have a plan and then keeping yourself well enough to take the exam which is hard this winter time exams too yeah. are tough because the 
cold and flu season is upon us. Yeah, and like if you're not sleeping, like I, you know, I tried to be responsible as a 1L and I blocked out my eight to nine hours a day when I was studying and I was going to sleep. And that was great, except that I would lay awake in bed for four hours every night with my, you know, things running through my head, literally unable to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And I did that every night for about three weeks. Yeah, not a great. And at the end of that, I was completely crazy. Yeah. So that's not great. Yeah. So you need to have a plan for that. You need to be not just eating pizza and eating crummy food because if you get the flu um, or you caffeine, get sick. Caffeine, like the over-caffeinated. Oh, yeah. Watch your over-caffeination because, you know, uppers and downers, man. You got to balance them out. You can only have so much caffeine during the day. It has to be well-timed or you're up in the middle of the night. And so you have to really be thoughtful about how you're treating your body. And then when you are getting closer to exams, you also have to be careful with caffeine because if you over-caffeinate before an exam, once the adrenaline kicks in, it can make you, can you feel really, really crazy. Really crazy and jittery. Yeah, and I think like this, people who have test anxiety, mm -hmm. like, you know, really got to be careful with your caffeination because if you're already like in an anxiety spiral and then you're like also really caffeinated, mm -hmm. you know, and what are you eating and what are you bringing, you know, all of these things. I think we have a whole episode or at least a blog post on what we brought to our exams, which yeah. we had different strategies on. But, you know, all these things you don't think about. You want to, you know, kind of, I even had um, an iPad playlist that I mm -hmm. had my like exam playlist to get me like psyched up for the exam and I would literally mm -hmm. go in you know as long as they would let me have my headphones in I would have my headphones in and be listening to like Beyonce um and it just made me happier than sitting there being like oh my god we're starting the exam mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I was like I had just had you got like dial in your routine and kind of think about like what are ways I can make this less horrible for myself Yep. for me it was also studying in different libraries not the law library mm -hmm. you know any of these things like no one cares where you study no like, you can study wherever you want. If the law library is making you miserable, go to a different library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got to do whatever you got to do to get through this. Yeah. I mean, I even know people who literally moved off campus and, like, stayed with friends or, like, a loved one or something just to get out of that bubble of, like, stress and anxiety and mm -hmm. craziness. And I think there's absolutely value in that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you just got to... Play your own game. Stay yeah. in your own lane. Don't get distracted. And and maybe the other final, final word. We've got a couple of final words <laughs> in this. Is to not get caught up in the crazy. Yeah. I think the more you can do to make this experience less horrible for yourself, mm -hmm. whether that is like you commit to going to a yoga class like a few days a week or you commit to taking a bath or even just like a nice hot shower to wind down before bed or... I don't know. I made myself some like homemade nut and oat milk the other day that now I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a nice like, you know, warm nut oat milk thing at night <laughs> to calm myself down. Yeah. Um, you know, all these things, they might sound crazy, but like there's just no reason to like amp yourself up more than you need to be when no. there are strategies you can employ and they're different for everyone you know, take a walk, like whatever. I always had a show to binge watch. Yeah, like, exactly. It wasn't stressful. Yeah, like something for your downtime, like, you you know, because your brain is just going to be going, 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 and you mm -hmm. have to find some way to turn that off. Yeah. Because otherwise, trust me, you're not going to sleep. That's true. So if insomnia is an issue, you might want to go right now to your doctor and try to get some Ambien <laughs> or something. Because <laughs> that was literally what got me through exams yeah. after that. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing, but you got to do what works. Yeah. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this episode of the Law School Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review and rating on your favorite listening app. We'd really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Allison at Lee at LawSchoolToolbox.com or Allison at LawSchoolToolbox.com. Or you can always contact us via our website contact form at LawSchoolToolbox.com. Thanks for listening and we'll talk soon. Mm -hmm.